Now, it's an interesting story developing, and anyone using social media, I think particularly uh, Facebook, will have been faced with an advert uh, which often purports uh, to offer you a product that's endorsed by a TV personality, one of the uh, one of the breakfast shows or the, the morning TV shows in America, uh, in Britain seems really popular as well, as Dragons. Uh, and also, in one case, Miriam O'Callaghan, because she said she's to sue Facebook for defamation in a landmark Irish case. She's alleging that the social media giant is promoting fake advertisements with malicious stories about her in order to attract clicks. Professor Kevin Curran is a professor of cybersecurity at University of Ulster. Good morning, Professor. Thanks for taking the call. Good morning, Greg. This is an interesting case uh, that Miriam has decided to take, and she seems to be taking it for all the right reasons. She is, because it does affect her reputation that you have these ads which generally redirect people to um, buy cryptocurrency and other bogus schemes where you know you do not get a return on your investment whatsoever. And they are persistent. They're in lots of people's feeds for many years now. I mean, I've been looking at the Dragon's Den, which is, you know, in in, in in England again. And just last week, for instance, the consumer campaigner Martin Lewis um, dropped his legal action against Facebook after they agreed to pay $2.5 million, um, because he was appearing in ads all the time. And, of course, he is the advocate for the consumer. And he's, you know, and then people were generally trusting these ads and believing them because they are very credible. What you have is a picture of the celebrity like Miriam or Martin Lewis, you know, and then it says that I can't believe this product when I've seen it. And the whole story reads very well until, of course, you click through to this financial product generally, which enables you to buy cryptocurrencies. And, of course, people get scammed and people are losing a lot of life-changing money in some cases. Yeah, and in her case, I think, too, it's like people uh, just have to pay the postage but then when the bill comes loads of money's been taken out and then it starts coming out every month and they end up in some cases having to shut down accounts and all manner of things facebook say they they can they can limit uh, you know fake news they can try and make facebook more conversational they have the tools to sort of make changes to people news, news feeds why would they be so slow um, to, 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 to act on, on these types of uh, fake news ads, uh, Kevin? It's generally the scale of things. You have three, 300 million posts per day. Um, and again, the these scammers use a variety of celebrities. They change the wording. They, you know, they're in every country. You know, this is Miriam's news in Ireland, Martin Lewis in the UK, Dragon's Den. In other words, they have different celebrities from TV in each country. So therefore, it comes down to moderators again. Now, there are the button, you know, Facebook have introduced a button where you can report an ad. Now, I've been doing that with a Dragon's Den one for, for the last two years, and it still keeps appearing. <laughs> so that really is not a solution by itself, but you do need human moderators because, again, an algorithm really can't go through a story and figure out that it's fraud, in most cases as well. So it comes down really to just that Facebook not having enough people to moderate and to remove these fraud, you know, fraud ads, really. Because in reality, what it turns out to be is just an image and a link, you know, and, and, and the link could be, you know, it could be a shortened link or whatever, and the image is just an image. As you say, there's so many millions of those a day. Uh, it would be a, a headache to try a, and uh, eliminate this altogether. Uh, very much, yeah, but, you know, they have to do something because, you know, these people's reputations are, you know, our state, really. So, again, they've just got to pump some of that profit back into doing this, really. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they will improve the algorithms all the time, but, of course, it's always a cat and mouse game that the scammers will move on themselves to use kind of tools which allow them to rewrite these ads to make them more believable, to use different URLs, because it's quite easy for them to register new sites. They can do it in minutes, really, and redirect people. So, mm -hmm. again, Again, this, the problem will never go away again, and in some ways, it's just really education. And you know, I, I, and what I find is, if I go into YouTube, which or if I go into Facebook and I'm on my PC and I use an ad blocker, which I recommend everyone do, I only see except about one whitelist Highland Radio. But carry on. 
Yeah, I use it by <laughs> one. I see by one ad in twenty five. And I went to a browser the last day, but they didn't have an ad blocker, and all these feature ads again, which these are really. I've seen one in eight of my Facebook feed was an ad, really. So an yeah. ad blocker will protect you in a lot of cases against seeing too many of these ads. But really. what about ourselves? I mean, you know, like I am sick and tired of people pasting in. I don't know if this is true, but tomorrow, uh, a lawyer friend of mine says, tomorrow, if we don't post this, everything you've put on Facebook will be able to be used for this, that, and the other. If tomorrow never comes, every time I see it, I think of Garth Brooks, uh, then people are clicking these ads, people are sharing these fake medical news stories. Maybe Facebook could try and educate its user base as well. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> that's a global problem. I mean, that's actually, as you just say, educating people really and it's very hard to to do that for them because yeah a lot of people just do not have scientific training and are not able to spot something which is really dangerous like some of these medical stories which get shared again and you know that, so that that really is a problem for society as a whole and again you just got to probably just block some of your friends who really share strange false stories like you know that do appear really that some people really do not have any wit when it comes to sharing stories uh, this is a shot across the bow do you think that facebook will probably come to some arrangement to with Miriam, uh, it'll never get to court, will it, Paul? Uh, Kevin? Uh, I, I doubt that. I mean, in the case of Martin Lewis, again, they paid £2.5 million and he denoted that to a citizen's advice project, really. But, um, again, yeah, Facebook can't be seen to be doing nothing. They, they have to they have to respond to especially high-profile celebrities like Miriam taking a case against them. Their share price has dropped. It's down $100 for, you know, in the last few months, really. So Facebook are struggling because they know that, you know, the investors know that they're coming under scrutiny in so many countries because of fake news, because of um, stories like this, fake ads, really, and, they go, and of course, all the privacy leaks that they've had. So really, they do not have the, the free-for-all that they had a number of years ago, and they were struggling, really, in a modern age, especially when a lot of people are sharing less on Facebook. That's why you're seeing more notifications. They're constantly trying to get you to go back into the ecosystem. But, you know, again, it's not that they're... You know, they're definitely not going to go broke overnight because Facebook advertising brings in billions of pounds to them. Yeah. It really is still one of the most targeted advertising networks you can find, really, where they, they can bring it down to, I want to I want to advertise my story to people who are between the age of 25 and 28. They have an income of, of a certain thing and that they like these type of products. So, again, you can have very, very specific advertising if you're an advertiser on Facebook. But the problem is... Well, we're told it's not working. We're told, and, like, we're told online online advertising isn't working. I saw a study there not lots, lots long ago that people just really, it all just gets lost in, 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 a, in a miriam of, of, of fake news and pictures of, of uh, snow. <laughs> it, it, in a lot of cases, you're right. I mean, you, you, we become immune to the advertising, but no, it still works, especially in the products like Instagram in the feed. Again, that, that's one yeah. of the most and, and lucrative spots. Collaborations and stuff, yeah. Yeah, no, it definitely still works on Facebook. Again, you gotta you gotta buy a lot of ads, but it still works, especially in Instagram, because people are you cannot get around, you know, when it's in your feed. Okay, and uh, a caller says, I want to ask you to comment on this, Professor. If uh, I saw anyone from RTE endorsing every anything, I'd double check for sure. Uh, but I think that might be a bit cynical there. Listen, thanks as always, Kevin. Great to chat to you. You're welcome, Greg. Professor Kevin Corrin there.